What's happening, Puff? I'll be back to you if JD ain't had enough. Jermaine Dupree, king of the pedophiles, if you ask me, baby. If there's one artist who keeps finding themselves in the middle of drama and catastrophe probably every other week, it's gotta be Sean John Combs, aka Diddy. At this stage, Diddy should just log off from his social media for a while, because every day there's someone new taking shots at him. This time, it's none other than famous comedian Cat Williams, the same person who also talked about how the industry does not show a just and unbiased attitude when it comes to black entertainers. But recently, Cat came forward and decided to talk about how Diddy grooms young artists underneath him. We know that this is not something new for Diddy, as he is always in the spotlight when it comes to controversy. However, it seems like Cat has come armed with full evidence and receipts. I've had to turn down $50 million four times, because uh, P. Diddy be wanting to body, and you gotta tell him no. Now, Cat Williams is once again revealing the reality of everything. Over the years, the comedian has ruffled quite a lot of feathers by speaking what you could call the truth. To really have an idea of what he's saying now, we have to go all the way back to the 90s. Back in the 90s, the hip-hop world was ruled by, you might remember, the charismatic and sensational duo Criss Cross. Chris Mac Daddy Kelly and Chris Daddy Mac Smith were all over the music industry with top-notch music albums. They landed a major breakthrough when performing at the Lynx Mall Atlanta. One day, there was someone else as well who was present in the audience named Jermaine Dupree. Dupree liked what he saw and believed that they were stars before anyone heard about them. When I met them, I said, what do y'all do? Light skin Chris said, we just cool. The pair eventually signed to Dupree's studio and would go on to record their first album, which would become an international success. After that, they'd go on tour with Michael Jackson. What made this even more interesting is that they made their mark on the industry with outstanding and unique fashion sense. All in all, Criss Cross was at the top of the world. However, there always comes an end to everything. Both Chris Kelly and Chris Mack stayed together for a full two albums before they decided to part ways for good. Although they did get back together in 2013 for an anniversary, but that was basically it. Regardless though, supporters were hoping for a reunion, but at this point, it's long since impossible. The worst would happen on May 1st, when Chris Mack Daddy unfortunately passed away. Chris was found cold in his house and was later taken to an Atlanta hospital, but it was too late. Shortly after his death, people got to know the reality of what he had been through. Though Chris had always put up a brave face for the media, he had been going through a lot of serious struggles and tough times, and the audience had no clue about it. Like many rappers before him, Chris had gotten into different narcotics and had become severely addicted. Rumors about Chris's addiction problem had been circulating for years in the industry, especially after Chris was spotted with bald patches. At the time though, Chris had denied all these allegations and said that the bald patches had nothing to do with anything. Did you know his partner Chris Kelly? Yes, I did. Wow. Yeah, I actually, before he died, we actually, um, we was getting high in a club. The truth was revealed in his death though, showing what the actual cause of his death was and that he had left supporters in a great shock. His mother and uncle revealed that Chris, in fact, was dealing with substance abuse for many, many years, and the autopsy report also matched with what they had claimed about him. According to the report, Chris died due to the overuse of narcotics that included a variety of different substances. Heartbreakingly, one of his friends also revealed that just the day before, Chris had come to her house in order to try and recover from his addiction. We lost Chris Kelly almost 10 years ago to overdose. Yeah, man. And you're sitting here telling me, now nah, we used to get high together. Insane. It's crazy. Following Kelly's death, Dupree came forward and showed how sad and shocked he was that Kelly had passed away. He called him a hard worker and described him as someone always on point. According to Dupree, Kelly's passion for music and his love of doing shows was something that had always kept him at the top of the list. He also expressed his grief by saying that he was the only one who had spent more time with the two Chris's, so one can imagine how bad it would be for him to think about Kelly passing away like this. Dupree even went as far as to call Chris his son. They was, they was like the word swag before anybody used that. It, before it was even being used. Like they, they, their mentality was, I don't know what they was on. However, that's not what Kat thinks about this whole situation. According to the comedian, all of this was nothing but a trick to get away with the whole situation that Dupree had used. 
As per his opinion, it was Dupree who was responsible for everything that happened to Chris Kelly. Dupree had apparently brought things to the point where Chris Cross had no other option but to end things, and therefore, Chris Kelly had ended up going down a dark path. This wasn't just Chris Cross. According to him, Bow Wow, another rapper in the industry, had also threatened to pull back the curtain on whatever Dupree had been doing. So one can assume that there had to be some truth to Cat Williams' claims. Jermaine's like my mentor slash father figure. I see them do it. When I get old and I get my bank up, I want to do it. It wasn't just Chris's death that made Kat speak about everything, but what had been happening long before that as well. Back then, fans had brushed off his claims. According to them, since Kat was never able to reach the same heights of success as his peers, it made him say things which weren't really true. Essentially, he was accused of lying for clout. According to him, Chris was one of the artists that Diddy had an influence on, along with Jermaine Dupree. As per Kat's words, because of the despair that they had caused Chris Kelly, they were indirectly responsible for his death. Not just that, Diddy was also associated and accused of grooming and manipulating young singers including Chris Brown and Usher in order to safeguard his personal interests in the music industry. But due to his influence at the time, it wasn't really talked about. I don't really, I don't have legal guardianship of him, but for the next 48 hours, he's with me. So, um, and, yeah, and we gonna go full, buck full crazy. So, if the truth is what Kat has been spilling about Jermaine Dupri, it can be assumed that he is talking the same about Diddy, and therefore, that might also have some validation behind it. Since everyone knows that both Diddy and Dupree are good friends, it can be assumed that Diddy might have helped Dupree out with his various troubles. Both of them have a record of grooming minors and young artists, so when Diddy saw his friend in a bind, he could have lent him a hand. He also knows a lot about these kinds of things, and when it comes to allegations, he's had experience with allegations put forward to him by all kinds of people. In the court of public opinion, it doesn't seem like people have a hard time believing that, because over the years, there have been a lot of skeletons revealed and pulled out of their closets. A woman claims the rapper drugged and sexually assaulted her in New York City back in 1991. Diddy has been associated with quite a lot of minors and young artists, and Cassie's lawsuit really set the record for all of that. With all of this, everyone started to know what sort of personality Diddy has, and what kind of things he gets up to when no one's watching. Because of everything he's been involved in, it's believed by quite a lot of people that there should be a serious investigation into Diddy, likely a legal one where he can be questioned. Everything that Cat Williams came up with has now been much more appreciated by everyone out there. People are talking about him as a brave man who decided to be part of the solution and not part of the problem. See, I got the receipts for everything I'm telling you. That's why I can yeah, say yeah, I'm I so freely. Can't, can't I with all that said, what are your thoughts on this matter? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed watching this video and you want to stay updated with all the latest tea, make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to ring the bell icon. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.